Margo, how does it feel having not seen humans for the last three days? It feels horrible. And then our job is we gotta stop the boat and the engine's still on it, which is a miracle. I am gonna guesstimate this is gonna take the full five days to get there. What was we supposed to be a four and a half day trip is turning into a week long <laughs> extravaganza. That was so much fun. It's like a cruise. But in general, I think there, for this trip to be a success, you need another stronger crew member, and I don't think I'm that, at least not right now. The Oxford Dictionary defines fight or flight as the instinctive psychological response to a threatening situation, which readies one either to resist forcibly or to run away. In our minds, there is only one possible solution when things are going wrong, and that's to fight. How was it? Um, I feel more confident now, and yes, Lago, we were holding up traffic, but I think I got this. This is what has kept us going during our last seven years of full-time travel, and now that we're on a boat, the need to fight is ever more present. All right, I'm a little scared. Okay, I'm a little more than a little scared, but I'm not a lot scared. A few days ago, we left Portugal for a 600 nautical mile passage to the Canary Islands. So today is gonna mark our most epic passage yet to date as a family. Probably without knowing a lot of the history of this boat, probably the most epic passage that this boat's ever had. And within the first two days, we had extreme bouts with seasickness and our spinnaker halyard chafed through, leaving us with a sail overboard situation. So this is what happened. Oh. Our, our spinnaker halyard just like frayed. Is that a brand new one? Yeah, it's brand new. Brand um, new. Yeah. We are now entering day three of our journey. And there is no land in sight. It's pretty rolly. And as much as we think we're in a comfortable routine, that's not exactly the case. We've lost everything that we We've lost the gas tank, that's for sure. Join us as we figure out how much more we do not know and how to ensure the next time out is better. You should give me orders because I'm so tired now. My brain is broken. <laughs> Thank you so much to our patrons who make this and every one of our episodes possible. Is your staple pan at least? A little bit. I should wait for it at least. Go back to sleep. And welcome to day three. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I sound like. And welcome to day three. No. Welcome to day three. It's not day three yet. Day three, I guess, officially starts around 12.30 in the afternoon, but either way, I'm calling it day three. Who cares? Listen, we're not about this long. You can make up your own rules. Uh, Jessica is not yet 100%. She's getting there. She's, I would, I haven't asked her, but if I were to guess, I'd say she's probably like a, um, a little over 50% of being positive. I think she graduated from like 20% to 30% and probably, yeah, who knows? She's still inside the boat. It's been this crazy phenomenon. For the first year, she has not been inside the boat for more than 10 minutes. You go on a five-day passage to the Canary Islands, and next thing you know, she decides to go ahead and get sick and spend all of her time inside. It's, I should have tried that from day one. Morning. Whoa. Quick, shut the door, shut the door, shut the door. You doing okay? I'm okay. How are you feeling this morning? I went to the bathroom and I brushed my teeth after three days. There you go. Listen, just the fact that you can get out of bed right now and do okay. that, it's, it's a good thing. Give me 15 more minutes and I'm gonna come and watch. Okay. Okay? Alright, then 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 I, I get to go to I get to go to sleep. And then you can go to sleep. Okay, cool. Okay. Pumpkin slice get done. <laughs> It's on my list for today. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, it's it's morning. I have done my evening watch. Um, you know, it's it's not easy, but I've been sleeping very well during the day, so I can sort of manage this time at night. I, I pass the time by podcasts and I don't know, looking at old pictures, and that sort of keeps keeps me awake. Um, we have been sailing the entire time, which is really cool. For the first year in the Mediterranean, we sailed very little. This time, we turned on the engines to leave. We turned on the engines for our spinnaker debacle to go ahead and sort of 
get us back, you know, head to wind and get, you know, sails back out. And, and that's it. Speaking of the spinnaker, it's still laying right there. That's, that's what it is. Once again, not very safe. We just haven't gotten to there yet. So, all that being said, um, we gotta just put it up front because we're not gonna use it for the rest of the trip. It's not gonna get all moldy and disgusting in two days. So that's sort of what we have to do. We may turn on the motor because of the fact that we are, we're running out of battery power. Um, our wind angle and our boat angle and the sun angle has not all been cooperating. So we just have to sort of turn on the motors, get the alternators going and that's it. But I think we're, we're turning a, a page here. I think this is, this is a very good thing today, sort of. We're all getting happier. I think so, at least everyone's sleeping. So that, that, that's instant happiness all at once. Welcome to day three. So this is the first time that she's put her head above 90 degrees in the last two days. It's been a little bit of a challenge here, guys. And I don't want to talk about my seasickness anymore. I think I'm coming out of it by day three. It's start, we're starting day three now, right? Look at you. You're already like... I'm talking. You're talking. You're happy. <laughs> this, this, if I could have gotten more than a grunt out of her, like <laughs> yesterday, it would have been a good thing. It was usually this type of grunt. I, there are times where I, listen, I don't want to dwell on being sick, but there are times where I like adore being sick because I get to sit back and relax and enjoy life and enjoy sort of doing nothing. Is that what you're feeling right that, now? That's not what I'm feeling. <laughs> <laughs> All I was thinking was the whole time I was throwing up like, why did I think this would be a good idea? But you know, it's time to put on a movie. I can, I can joke now and I can't even watch a movie yet. I'm not even at that point. All right, so we are getting our weather from a, a weather router. Jamie Behan, Jamie Behan, Jamie Gifford, Jamie and Behan Gifford <laughs> from Sailing Totem has been helping us get our, our weather coordinates all set up. Because we're a cat and because we don't have a pole to go ahead and put our, 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 our Genoa out, we can't go wing on wing. So we have to sort of play the, the angles trying to get the weather to work for us all the way down. So we're, all right, we look cool on the charts. We got this cool zigzag going. Yeah, exactly. I think we're going to buy a pole when Ugh. we get to the Canary Islands. Yeah, I definitely want because, a pole now. Because I don't want to do this zigzag thing no. going across the Atlantic. And I think it's going to take us an extra day because of that, isn't it? It's going to take us a couple extra hours. Yeah. It's going to feel like a day. That's for sure. It's definitely going to feel like a day for me. All right. So our plan right now for the rest of the day, for the rest of the trip, we've now completed three, two days and two hours yeah. all the way through. Um, we're expecting another three days and, I don't know, four, five, six hours. We have basically like 360 nautical miles, which... And that's going as a crow flies. With our zigzagging, we're gonna add on maybe another 40 miles to that, maybe a little more. So the way that we're getting communications back and forth is through our Iridium Go satellite connection. And it's it's really interesting. We, we can make phone I'm calls. I'm really interested. We can, we can send emails, we can send texts. Wow, look at that wave. Anyway, don't look. No, don't look. Okay. All right. Okay, how long? Um, but the latest forecast, so expect waves between at our back, kind of, or at our side. Oh, I don't like them at our side. Between six and ten feet for the remainder of the way and then all the days that's what it's saying a hundred percent hundred percent we have that and then the weather is got, not going to be over 20 knots of, of wind although right now we're at like 17 knots Perfect. um which is really good no reefing which means no reefing oh, some jibing to go ahead and do our little zigzags but the, the, oh jesus that is what has been happening for two days and, and it happens about every minute i'm surprised it hasn't happened yet since we've been talking listen jessica's been sleeping here on the couch the entire time i refuse to go into the bedroom and you have to go cabin. to the bedroom you don't hear the wave slap because the bedroom's under the water line all right i brushed my teeth <laughs> my big accomplishment. I went to the bathroom by myself. I put some clothes on and I'm at the helm. Um, my stomach is still not 100% and now it's like up in my head and I feel a bit foggy, but I'm out here because I've got to put some shift work in here and, and help out the team. Um, not much else to add. Oh, I ate a banana. That, that's exciting. Such a great accomplishment. <laughs> 
cracks a smile upon my face. Then it all turns black. How are you feeling? Like I don't feel that seasick anymore. It's just when I feel slightly seasick, I need to come out here to make sure I don't feel seasick again. And you've only thrown up once, right? Yeah. So I'm the reigning queen of throwing up. Oh yeah, actually twice. Twice. Oh. One more and you're tied with me. I don't care about the other one. I don't care about what you done. Oh, I wish that you could stay. Margo, how does it feel not having seen humans for like three days now? It feels horrible. I miss humans. It's like lockdown all over again. You realize I'm a human here. No, you aren't. You're an alien. Okay. Plus, there are humans like right over there. Yeah, but we can't see them, so they don't... Call them on the radio. Hello, humans. Are you human? <laughs> Good morning from morning number four, We're completing day three. It's just, it's, it's, hello from day four. Uh, I am, we're learning a lot for Atlantic Crossing. We're learning that there is very little that is to be done if you want actually to have things to get done. Avalon has still essays to write for college. She still has, um, I have still video to edit. You know, the idea that we can actually get work done while we're underway, at least for the first few days, not that much. So, I'm hoping that today's a better day. I'm hoping that today's going to be a uh, more solid day. We have some cleaning up to do as well. This place is a mess. So, how'd you sleep last night? Mm, I slept for about 12.30 to around 3 30 last night. And then again from about 5 to 6. And then when the sun's already coming up, I woke up. It's really pretty. And you're still staying on the couch, aren't you? <laughs> I'm quite comfortable there. And I, I don't know, I just like that spot. But right now, I'm happy there. It's better than sleeping out here. And I thought I would be sleeping out here most of the time. Because so far on longer passages, I have a hard time going inside. So it is what it is. It's comfy. So this time's 21 days. Um, the Atlantic, which I thought. Yeah, do you want the truth, Will? You can use this maybe for another, I have an inch, hold on. Truthfully, and you're not gonna wanna use this in this video, but I don't think that I should cross with everyone. I think that Largo and I have been pretty sick. I think that Avalon is fine, she's 17. I think you and her and Brad should cross and then maybe take on one more crew. And I think Largo and I should take the flight. I think that I, to be honest, and I always think I'm of use every place because I like to think I'm superwoman. I think I'm a hindrance here because I've been so sick that I can't, I can't be at the helm. I can't cook. I don't need much taking care of. I mean, I do need someone to throw my puke bag away every now and then and like, um, you know, maybe throw me a saltine. But in general, I think there, for this trip to be a success, you need another stronger crew member, and I don't think I'm that, at least not right now. Let's not, let's not, let's not go there. When do we want to go there? We're never going there. We're going to pretend this didn't exist. I need the erase button right It's now. on video. It's all on video. Now, what I just said was not for drama. We record moments like these all the time because we're not just creating a vlog, but also a chronicle of our life which includes those things we're not 100% ready to share at the moment, but we decided to put this in because it's real. This is part of the journey. We want to be honest all the way through. But before we could simmer on the thought of splitting up the family for three weeks during the Atlantic crossing, we turned around to see something that we could have never envisioned. Are you serious? When did that happen? What the hell? We've lost... Is our engine still on there? Oh no. Oh. Oh, I guarantee you it's not. Um, here, well, here's a The engine is still there. What? Oh, here. Crap, the engine's still there. How do we get. Well, what happened then? I don't know. It's 
slipped. Oh boy. How the hell are we gonna get that back? Um, I gotta stop the boat, that's what I got. If you are seeing what we are seeing, one side of our dinghy, the side with the engine, was dragging in the water, and unfortunately, the outboard was under the water. We had done some work to our davits while hauled out in Lagos, so when this happened, we were pretty shocked. We also changed our, our davit line from a steel wire to a, um, to a, to a dynamo cord, which was put in there. It looks like it slipped. It's still connected. To the to the dinghy, I'm waiting for Jessica now to go ahead and get the get support, meaning like one of the kids, and she's gonna get all bundled up so she can be warm. And then our job is we gotta stop the boat, and the engine's still on it, which is a miracle. And then um, and then try to find a way to strap it back on. Oh, when did that happen? What am I doing? Okay, we gotta stop the boat like right now. Or right now. Why? So we don't lose more of the dinghy. Oh. Why does this always happen on the long treks? Like, this has never happened on the short We've already had... We've never had anything go we've wrong. We've had two things go wrong each... Well, one thing go wrong each day. I think we need to... Oh, we can't see it. We've lost... Not everything that we've lost the gas tank, that's for sure. I don't know what we're going to do the motor. So what What happened, though? Can you tell what happened? Did the dab it broke? I think where the, the lines from the davits, I think it broke. It's a Dyneema line, it's supposed to be pretty strong. Did you just replace that? Yeah, we just replaced it. So we're gonna need to get, we need to get the, Margo, hand me the, the davit winch. The winch the Should davit. we cut, because I know it's all, it's strapped up with the dinghy cover on those lines up top. Should I'm we cut those the lines? Cover. The dinghy cover's not connected. Hold on, hold on, before you, before you move around. I don't, I'm gonna get one hand off If there is one thing for sure that we are learning as a team, it's that when the going gets rough, our family gets going. We all stepped up to manage the situation and get it on camera, of course. Try, try to get to the front, man. This is blue one. Huh? This is blue one. And it's very good that I didn't. Look, it's actually fell apart. If we can just pop it off into the water, then we can drag it up. Does that make sense? That thing weighs like three of us. We couldn't drag it up. You don't think so? No, we'd need we'd need one of the halyards, and since one is damaged, that's how generally people get their dinghy motors onto their boats. When it comes to securing the dinghy for a passage, we are always about redundant systems. In other words, we tie additional ropes to secure the dinghy to the boat just in case something happens. Which we did, but in this case, even those failed us. We put on some of these straps, okay. industrial straps, to go ahead and attach it as opposed to do what we had before, which was ropes. And this made a lot of sense at the time because we actually had the ropes that were inside the dinghy, but because we had the cover on it, we couldn't sort of attach it to the inside, so this was going around it. Evelyn, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. We've got Lago here, holding it on there. Evelyn and Will, I'm filming. And I'm looking for other ships. And actually, I did see another ship out there for the first time in three days. But we're at no risk of running into it. Is it loose yet, Avalon? I've got it. Okay. As long as I can, hook it. You don't want to hook it. That's what's like holding on to the boat. Uh, technically, I'm holding on to it, and I'm holding it. No, on. I know that, but here, bring that over here. Ready? We really wait. No, what we need to do is we need to flip the dinghy first. That is most important. Yeah. After digging through all the lines and finally getting a handle on the situation, we uncovered that the dinghy was still attached to the davits on both sides, and all we had to do was reel it up to the port side and get it flipped back around. The davit is still on there, on the other side. It's connected. Yeah. This was huge, as there was not a clear path to securing the dinghy back up to its cruising position. I need, I need space so I can tie this up. What was we supposed to be a four and a half day trip is turning into a week long <laughs> extravaganza. That was so much fun. It's like a cruise. Do you think we can flip it? How the hell did it get like that though? This is better than the alternative. We're gonna sail with it like this? Yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and take the cover off. 
Wow, Dyneema held really well. Here we were. Okay. It's gonna flip it, I think. Pull it? Well, it's not gonna. It's if you crank a little bit. No, it's it's gonna. Go it's gonna over. flip it. It's gonna flip it. Look, it is gonna flip it over. Holy! <laughs> flipped it over. Yeah, now we cracked oh. the hole. What? What's the hole? What's the hole? What's the hole? So, what, what happened? happened? That's what happened. It's, it's, what's the, it, is it the dynamo? No, it, it lost. It lost integrity. It lost the ability to hold. What seems to be happening is that the locking mechanism for the teeth on the mechanical winch on the davits needs a bit of greasing. Are you still with me? So to keep it in place, we'll have to get a little bit creative. Once, I, once, once we're done here, I'm going to keep the winching hand because it's keeping the, the, the rope okay. in place. And then we're going to just tie it down, and I think that'll save us. Okay. Yeah, that's a very, like, taping solution. I, it's, it's a very get us to the, to the burrito solution. I think solution. we should, well, we're not going to. We're going to no. We are now. So that's one heck of a secure lock or whatever we have on there holding the engine in place. Yep. Who knows how long we've been dragging that baby. Probably needs a little servicing now, though, right? Good morning, Avalon. How did you sleep last night? Mm. <laughs> Nothing like a little problem solving first thing in the morning. I think my seasickness is gone. <laughs> Good morning, America. I mean, Canary Islands. We're not there yet. In three days. I could not be prouder of what we accomplished. Yes, I know, the fallen dinghy was probably our fault because we did not stress test the new line installation in the davits, but that's how we learn. To be prepared for everything at sea is to never be out at sea, because as you can see, Murphy's Law has a really strange way of showing up at the most imperfect time. But we all fought through it and hung tough. You should give me orders because I'm so tired now my brain is hurting. As much as this will probably cost us our 20-year-old outboard engine, the lessons learned from this incident are invaluable. We kept our cool and solved the issue. Avalon, have you puked on this trip at all? Nope. Wow. You're reigning queen on this trip, you and dad. I even worked while at the helm. Whoa. What'd you do? Essays. How many essays did you do? Two. For who? Um, Columbia and Harvard. Now, can you now I need to go back and write about this. <laughs> right, right, exactly. So as we're going along this passage of ours, we're on officially like day four. We crossed day three into day four. And look at this, Largo for lunch is at the helm, but he's got like a whole cheese board here. Largo, what are you thinking about? What do you think about lunch while you're on this passage? Um. How, my, how hungry I am, I don't know. But look at this, this is like a real this deal This is actually here. really good, you yeah. Got brie, you got, I don't know what kind of cheese that Spicy is. Spicy cheese. You got grilled cheese. Cheese. <laughs> More cheese. It's very cheesy. It is. And then Largo, Largo, listen to me, Jessica over here has finally found the will to live and get herself out of the couch. Well, at least set up on the couch. Look at this. You got vinegar and salt potato chips. Mm. I think you're a brand new person. This is my first real meal. If you call grilled cheese a real meal, but it's very good. We'll make some mean grilled cheese. Um, in three days, we start, just crossed over. We just started day four. And What's the magic sauce for feeling better? I don't know. Just let it, just ride it out. You Puke your movie? guts out, poop your brains out, whine, suffer, cry. What movie did you watch? Some stupid chick flick you put on. It's called The Ugly Truth. Oh. And this is The Ugly Truth. <laughs> Seriously, you look a lot better. I feel a lot better, finally. There you go. So you're still going to Atlantic Crystal? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. We'll see how tomorrow goes. Okay. See, outside it sounds really nice. You have the waves, and it's it's smooth. You can actually see that's not even that that choppy. Inside, it's like this. It's like a big mess. And there's the casualty I back want. there. One of Will's prize fenders, his baby fenders. No! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fender, baby fender! Fender, come back! I work 
worked so hard to inflate you. <laughs> so our dinghy engine's probably flooded. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay, look at Logo's cute. Out of the dinghy, okay. I'm not worried about that either. Oh That's lovely. I think we should clean that puke up too, all right.